In this video, we will review some principles and ground rules that are relevant at all stages. First and foremost, determine if you are doing an AI project or if you are building a product. There are major differences in mindset and approach that you have to take depending on which scenario applies to your current work. I would argue that even if you are doing an AI project, you could still benefit from applying some product development concepts. But let's go through the differences one by one. The first difference is the time scale over which activities are happening. When you're building a product, you're dealing with a longer and almost indefinite time scale, while projects happen over a specific time span. The second difference is that when you're doing a project, you only deal with one or two dimensions of a general problem that your company or team is trying to solve. While when you're dealing with a product, when you're building a product, you have to care about many different aspects. For example, if you trained a model and deployed it, you have done a project. While if you did that along with many other activities like participating in user research, engaging with marketing teams, and things like that, most probably you're building a product. The next difference is that you are doing a project if you're given requirements and asked to build something with a limited scope and then hand it off. While in product development, handoff are minimized to increase efficiency. Lastly, if I want to point out the most fundamental difference in my opinion, it would be that when you're doing a project, you're measured based on timely delivery and perhaps some projections about improved business metrics. While when you're building a product, you're not off the hook until the desired business outcome is actually realized. One reminder here is that also whenever I mention AI product, I keep the AI part in brackets with a question mark and that's to keep reminding you that you must focus on the problem you're solving and assuming that it needs AI is dangerous. A lot of the time you need to provide a solution that does not need anything more than a rule-based system or a very basic machine learning algorithm. It's only after the introduction of a solution like that that it is safe to think what advanced algorithms can be used to improve the solution and only based on data and the feedback you're collecting. With that out of the way, let's cover our 10 rules. You have to educate yourself about the in and out of the domain where your problem is. In other words, you need to become a believable authority in that domain. And that's if you want to build impactful products. Of course, depending on your role in the product team, you might need more or less domain knowledge, but having none is the recipe for building the wrong thing. You have to talk to people, like a lot, as in every day, and make sure you don't ask leading questions. We'll have another video discussing that soon. Solutions come and go. What last is the problem? Well, until we solve it. So, don't get attached to anything other than the problem itself. Once you know the problem that you want to solve and you need a narrative to convince others, this is important because to get buy-in from your extended team, from stakeholders and users, you need to communicate to them why that's important and what your product vision is. A lot of us fall in love with particular techniques and use those as hammers. In reality, we need to find a problem we want to solve, get to know the problem intimately, validate a potential solution rigorously, and then think about what product we need to build. You need to iterate and iterate and iterate. Good products don't fall out of the sky. Their makers iterate, learn, and refine until they get what they want. And here is a tip. If you think you have nothing else to validate, think harder. It's critical to have success metrics. Otherwise, how do you know in what direction to move? Technical measures like accuracy of your predictions are not, are not meaningful product metrics. 
What really matters at the end of the day is the usage and more importantly sales. Most other things are vanity and are, and are only there to make you feel good. Building ethically questionable things is a good way to lose customer trust and fail. Make a conscious effort in identifying what your product is doing in those areas and make sure that it is doing something that is aligned with your principles. If you feel like you are going in a circle, you most probably are. Stop, breathe, write down what problem you are trying to solve and go talk to your users. Lastly, you might think, I'm just a data scientist, why should I care about these? Of course, if your mindset is, I've done my part, the rest is not pro my problem, then sure, you, know, you don't need any of this. But if you want to make sure that your projects succeed, you need to lead your team to success, even if you're just a data scientist. The, the minimum you can do is to educate yourself about what it takes to succeed and be more effective when working and communicating with the team members and stakeholders.